Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group, and today we're catching up with Jens Borheim, CMO of Ultima Vax. As many of you probably already know, Ultima Vax is focused on developing an off the shelf universal oncology vaccine and has active trials across several indications in combination with checkpoint inhibitors. Welcome, Jens. Thank you so much for having me and nice to be back. So telomerase is expressed in 85 to 90% of cancer indications. So I think it's one of the most important points to cover off as it relates to UV1. Yes, so telomerase is an enzyme that is expressed uh, in tumor cells. And uh, it is expressed because uh, the tumor need a strategy or method for eternal cell division, which is one of the main features of cancer. So the telomerase expression is something that starts off early in the cancer development, and it's on throughout the course of the cancer and can be also found in the different parts of a cancer, both in the primary tumor and in the metastasis. So up to 90% uh, express telomerase. Uh, when we talk about the universal or broad range of uh, the vaccines, uh, there is also other features um, that needs to be uh, expressed here. One is that within the three peptides in our vaccine, there are different sequences or epitopes that can be recognized by different HLA molecules. So we do not do any HLA screening of patients before they are included in studies. And we have also done a global search and believe that there's a good coverage in different territories uh, around the globe. Further, um, the UV1 vaccine with uh, telomerase as the antigen um, <clears throat> is an off-the-shelf vaccine. Um, <laughs> ready to use and then that leads to a situation where the accessibility is uh, good you can take the vaccines in different level um, hospital levels um, mm -hmm. without any um, expensive infrastructure or complex methodology uh, to be there in place so all in all and uh, the telomerase as a target is um, interesting both from the biological side uh, from the access side for patients um, both when it comes to who can be included and on which level in the health system they can be treated. I realize you're working with late stage cancer patients, but since telomerase is expressed throughout, perhaps it's there's an opportunity to administer UV1 in earlier stages? Yes, we believe so. Um, so telomerase is... Uh, um, the expression of telomerase uh, starts early on in the cancer development. Uh, so as I said, um, and normal cells uh, need a strategy for eternal cell division and uh, through their development um, into a cancer cell. Um, normal cells die after a predefined number of cell divisions that doesn't occur in the cancer cell. And in 90%, um, <clears throat> This is due to the activation of uh, telomerase. So moving earlier is an option. Um, up until now, and I guess we will continue with that, we, we follow the development of the checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, up until a few years back, most of the development was in the advanced and metastatic stage. But now we are seeing uh, studies conducted and the drugs being approved in, in the adjuvant setting and also in the neoadjuvant setting. For us as a vaccine company with uh, an off-the-shelf vaccine, we find the neo adjuvant setting very interesting. We are, since it's ready to use, uh, it can be <clears throat> combined with checkpoint inhibitors in the few weeks before a patient gets the operation. And um, we believe that uh, giving the vaccine prior to, uh, to the operation might be good because then the T cells we expand can also identify their target in the tumor before it's removed, and that might lead to more immunological memory for the T cells over time. We hear quite a bit about personalized approaches, but it, I think it would be helpful if you could recap some of the key differences to UV1's off-the-shelf and universal approach. Yes. So first for uv one so we, um, telomerase is a self antigen. So that is uh, something that is uh, naturally occurring in the body. Um, 
it's uh, not expressed much outside of cancer. And um, <clears throat> we are focusing on CD4 cells. So the thinking is that when we um, vaccinate the patients towards telomerase, we use long synthetic peptides and then leads to expansion of CD4 cells. These CD4 cells that can recognize telomerase will migrate to the tumor and to the draining lymph nodes. And there they will identify their target telomerase in HLA on macrophages. Telomerase will be in macrophages because in dying tumor cells will leak peptides or proteins that are taken up by the antigen presenting cells and presented on. When the CD4 cells are um, meeting their target, um, they will start to secrete different cytokines that will make a true immunologic environment that will lead to a better environment for new T-cell expansions, so-called um, <clears throat> antigen spread. Um, and this is something that will continue over time since telomerase will not mutate. Uh, telomerase is expressed throughout the course of the cancer and will be in all parts of the cancer. So we believe that the main uh, effect of the CD4 cells we expand is to make a pro-immunological environment in the tumor. For most um, personalized uh, vaccines, uh, of course, there are different strategies. Um, <clears throat> you need to take a biopsy uh, from the patient, and then you need to identify uh, neoantigens or antigens that you want to vaccinate against. Um, then you need to design the vaccine and, and give it to the patient. Since you mainly are vaccinating against the neoantigens, that will be sequences that are foreign to the body. And over time, mutations in the tumor will change. So over time, it's likely that at least some of the responses induced by such a vaccine will become more and more irrelevant because that mutation has disappeared from the tumor and been replaced by a new mutation. So the main difference, I guess, is in uh, the production of the vaccine. Uh, we are off the shelf. Uh, personalized vaccines need to be made per person. Um, also, uh, it's something about the cells we want to expand, the CD4 cells versus the CD8 cells. Mm -hmm. um, I, just to conclude, I would say that um, I believe that different technologies will give efficacy to patients. We need different strategies, and hopefully in the future we will find a good solution, either with combining different solutions or using the different uh, methods on different subgroups of patients. If you pursue combination therapies, I assume you're limited by the indications covered by CPIs, and it's probably helpful that CPIs are expanding into more indications and in earlier stages? I think the CPIs are crucial for cancer vaccines. So um, we have tried to make cancer vaccines at least since the 90s. Um, and a lot of good trials were conducted in the 90s and early 2000s with great immune responses, but a little clinical efficacy for patients. Um, most of the vaccine companies today, they combine with CPIs because it is this mutually dependency between the immune system on one side and, and the uh, CPIs or, and tumor on the other side. So when you treat with a CPI, you, uh, you expect that there is a pre-activated T cell response against the tumor and kill off the tumor. You see that in some patients, but for many patients, there is not enough good T cells to really kill off the cancer. The other way around, if you have a lot of good T cells, but they cannot uh, come into the tumor and the draining lymph nodes, they will do little good for patients. So the combination is very important. And also um, <laughs> to say it this way, I think the vaccine development should follow the development of the CPIs within the cancer. So it should follow the CPIs now to the earlier stage of cancer as well. Ahead, we can't ignore the importance of March for Ultimavax as you share the NTM data and for immuno-oncology on a whole. Do you agree? Absolutely. So the Initium trial is our within our lead indication, uh, malignant melanoma. 
um, second line, oh, sorry, first line trial um, <clears throat> is a randomized trial. Um, it be nivopus minus the vaccine on, on top. It's for patients with advanced or metastatic um, melanoma. Um, <clears throat> the patients were included between June 2020 and July 2022. So we had a cutoff now in January this year when all patients have been in the study for at least 18 months and we look forward to the readout now in March. We actually had expected the results from this trial first half of 2023. So, so we really look forward to the readout uh, in this trial. Thank you, Jens. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you all for joining us here today to cover off such a hot topic. If you'd like to learn more about Ultimavax, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you.